So, um, I was the one who kind of brought up the idea that it's not... Alright, so games don't have a monopoly on, like, unique character design or anything design, stylization, all that. Like, other mediums, like anime or movies, TV shows, all of that, like, they do have those options. But whereas in TV and movies and all of those the main focus is on the visuals and the sound and all of that. Games, the main focus is on the interaction. So, unlike almost any other medium in the world, games have, like, the unique ability to kind of do whatever they want with their style and animation. Like, you have everything from, like, The Last of Us, which looks like a cinematic, like, real-life person movie, Mm. or you have, like, Pong, which is just pixels on a screen. <laughs> I mean, like, text-based adventures games don't even technically have a, a style. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, kind of was thinking, like, it's one of the really cool things that games have is you have games like Call of Duty, The Last of Us, all of those where it's real life like, based, and then you have games where it's very much not real-life based, and I've heard, okay, I have heard this once, and it was kind of weird. Somebody was saying, like, Mm -hmm. all of the real-life based games are, like, the best way to do a game, but if you think about it, like, I think almost everybody has at least one game that they really love that's just kind of, like, ridiculous graphics, right? Yeah. Like, there are quite a few where, like, it's it's really goofy looking, but just the, like, the, the story, which is, like, I guess why people are drawn into those games is, like, really, really well done. So mm. you kind of, it just kind of, det- well, I don't know if, I don't know if, if that's a thing where, like, the graphics become an afterthought, but it's just kind of, like, just a different way to get invested in something. Yeah. Or, like, even... It's not even the story sometimes. Like, uh, Splatoon has, like, no story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the art style of Splatoon, actually. That's kind of yeah. cool. It's, it's very nickelodeon e, like, very 90s yeah. Nickelodeon. Yeah. Well, and then it's, like, it's kind of cool because it lets some games do, like... I mean, it, th- and this, this gets obnoxious when it happens, like, on the app store or something like that, but you can do, like, the same game a couple of different ways. I mean, like, granted, that means like, <laughs> sometimes you end up with, like, Candy Crush and, like, a Fruit Blast and, like, all of the games that are the exact same thing just with a different skin on it, but... According, according to Valeria, Splatoon has lore, so <laughs> apparently there is some sort of story within that. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is, but it's not, like, super, <laughs> super in-depth. Okay, fair, fair. Cru- crucify <laughs> me if I'm entirely wrong about that, but there's like a there's like a bit of lore, like about a war between like the Inklings and the Octarians, which are just octo- like the octopus version of Inklings. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is like after a war, and then there's like a single player campaign where you're like trying to take back a power source from them. Okay, I see. Mm-hmm. So yes. what all like what all is everybody's like favorite animation style for or uh, an animation style for a game that like they really really enjoyed that they didn't like necessarily think that they were going to I guess so kind of like the like an art style that kind of changed our mind about a game kind of thing yeah okay um hmm. I think about that for a moment <laughs> I can say for me, go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, ourselves for me are very dependent on like what what's being played there. It's it's a part of the visual medium that is the video game. So there are things that fit with some and don't fit with others. Um, so for I mean, using the two kind of story based games I talked about last week that um, I was really enjoying, Undertale and uh, Life is Strange. Our styles are very different. Mm. But they, they both fit with kind of what's trying to be projected by the uh, by the game creators, and it ends up working out really well. 
Mm. Um, similar with that, you've got games like, oh God, Firefall, I want to say it was. Oh, Ga- yeah, game didn't turn fine. out very well. <laughs> <laughs> but the art great. style. I don't yeah, think I saw what that was, actually. It was, it was a first-person shooter MMO, which, in concept, that sounds awesome. But, yeah, uh, there, there's been a few of those. what that... Destiny was going to be. <laughs> yeah. But it, it didn't work out too well. But the art style was intentionally very... Um, it was, like, semi-realistic, but still Borderlands-esque cartoony, mm-hmm. but it Stylized. was highly asymmetric. Um, yeah. And that was the thing they wanted to really sell was this, you know, disjointed asymmetry of the world that spilled into the politics and the fighting and the monsters and the heroes. Um, mm-hmm. It worked pretty well, and I, I really liked it there. Cool. <laughs> but, you know, gameplay needed a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, of course. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's, that's kind of a downfall. funny thing, because, like, a TV show can get by on gra- on good graphics alone. I mean, like... Not very well, but, like, I watched, I don't know, like, Avatar. Like, the, the Blue People Avatar movie. Okay. <laughs> like, got by almost entirely on visuals alone, because, let's right. be honest, that story was not exactly <laughs> It's gripping. Pocahontas in space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it was, I was like, what am I watching? I don't understand. <laughs> Whereas, like a game can have like like you saying great graphics, it, yeah, I'm not I'm not playing this. <laughs> right, yeah, because I mean, because in in a non interactive medium, you can kind of even with like a bad movie, you can at least kind of revel in the fact that it's bad and just kind of passively watch it. Whereas if it's a bad game, it's literal work to try and play this game. So you're like, no, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very true. <laughs> Uh, an example of something that actually kind of surprised me with art, I remember when Minecraft was an alpha way back when, and I had popped into it because I had friends who were you know, threatening my life over not being on their <laughs> server with them. Right. Uh, and I, for, immediately when I was getting in that, I was like, this looks like a game that was made in 1984. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> and then... You know, naturally, within two hours, I forgot what food was and right, couldn't yeah. do nothing but mine. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, and and even with with like Minecraft, it it um it with with a, that kind of very simple blocky aesthetic, what it's able to do is say, okay, this is kind of roughly what it looks like, and you you kind of use your brain to fill in the details, and so that's. Uh, when you use like 8-bit graphics like that that's how um how it kind of has this timeless feel because people uh, this that minimalism people have the ability to fill in the blanks for themselves and draw out what they want from the scene (laughs) i think minecraft was actually the the first game to do that for me too or like at that point it's like oh good game equals good graphics but then i played that play that like like you i i'm pretty sure i had that same reaction like well this looks super goofy but everyone else is playing it so mm-hmm. yeah sure why not and then then like first night i had it like i was up until like the ungodly hours of the morning right <laughs> um oh i i remember now a, a game where where the visuals actually kind of drew me in i'm just like oh what is this and then i ended up really liking the game was um uh Zeno Clash. And if you haven't played it, uh, basically what it is, it's like a a first person brawler set in this really I I don't even know what to call this world. It's like um, like all the weapons are organic and like um, um, like one of the main characters uh, is called Mother Father. Is like this hermaphroditic bird. Thing. I could verify your age. <laughs> this? Oh yeah, it's it's definitely uh, definitely a, a mature game. Yes, or Ori is it, Ori is beautiful. <laughs> yes, Zeno Clash. <laughs> yes, Ori in the Blind Forest is fantastic mm. visually. But I'm yeah. actually playing through that right now. <laughs> but yeah, with um um. Uh, with Xenoclash, the visual style of it and the, just the weirdness 
of it drew me in, and it turned out to be this really interesting kind of first-person brawler, which I really loved. Well, and it, what was the, oh, No Man's Sky kind of thing. Like, I definitely oh, yeah. wanted to play that one on just graphics alone. Right. I mean, obviously not for, like, 60 bucks, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe when it goes on sale it. or something. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I can think of one. Oh. Uh, I was um, now great. I, I played World of Warcraft for a very long time. I was mm -hmm. I was in the addiction. I mainlined the addiction actually for many years. Mm -hmm. um, yep, I understand there that. Was, <laughs> <laughs> there was a time that I had kind of fallen out of it uh, near the end of Wrath, and I'd been playing since the start of Vanilla. Um, but then um, Cataclysm came out, and I was like, ah, okay, and got back into it. Mm -hmm. um, during my freshman year of undergraduate, and I was just kind of no. <laughs> unimpressed for for the most part on it. Good. Wrath's uh, deconstruction of rating kind of killed the game for me at that point. Um, but then I got to Deep Home, and oh my god, Deep Home! Like mm -hmm. hitting one of those first zones, they had really put in the extra work for the art assets. Mm -hmm. And it was all underground, and the entire sky was these like detailed gems that were always there. And it was just, I spent like an hour just walking around looking at it. It was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. what camera did that for? You know, a game that really bothers me hmm. is like <laughs> League of Legends because I watch the trailers for them, and they're always like absolutely gorgeous. And then, like, I'm like, Ooh, this game like almost looks like something I could and then like I saw the gameplay for the first time. I don't even remember when this was. It was a while ago. And I was just like, that that is I feel so falsely advertised too right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. I feel kind of the same way like with Overwatch. I mean Overwatch is a great game and I uh, I've I've enjoyed what I've played of it, like on the free weekends and stuff. Uh but it's like all the all the trailers and animated shorts and what's whatnot are just like I feel like this should be like some sort of Saturday morning cartoon or something. I don't feel like the, I'm being advertised a video game. I would watch that, honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. I do have to ask, Monkey, did you just tell me you don't have Overwatch? Uh, I uh, Yeah, I, I am kind of broke at the moment, and I do not own Overwatch at the moment. <laughs> uh, Fair enough. <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to lie. As somebody who does not have the money, nor computer, nor capabilities to play games ever... <laughs> I'm um. sorry, I hurt your soul, Mort. <laughs> Such is life. <laughs> my my back is hurting like no one's business, and you just like right in the soul part. I just <laughs> Mort's done. <laughs> it's like head out. <laughs> Don't worry, monkey. I've barely played it. <laughs> oh man. Um, but as somebody who like never has the time or money or anything to play video games. Um, I just, like, I follow them a lot, and Overwatch is, like, one of the best ones for that, because it, all of the lore and stuff is, like, really interesting and fun to hunt down. Like, it's almost <laughs> like a game for me at this point, because they don't release anything the same way twice. Right, like, yeah. And yeah. then the blogs and shit was a nightmare, but so much fun. <laughs> we doing the one Um, there's, like... Little things, like, um, on... I think it's on Blizzard's site. I don't even remember how I got to it. But, like, May has a canonical, like, a blog. Mm-hmm. That... Um, I don't know if it's... I don't know if there's a ton oh, of stuff on back. it. It's, like... <laughs> no, I'm still in a lot of pain, but... Like, her, like, writing things down about, like, oh, so, when Like, an old friend contacted me today, and it's, like, it's obviously Winston when she says it, but... Mm -hmm. Um... That, like, it's just them going through... A couple of the things that she does. I don't know if they're still updating it. I can't find it anymore. I don't know how I found it the first time. <laughs> yeah, and the, I, I remember there was something like that with Sombra too. Like she had a Twitter account and she like like hacked Blizzard and uh, things like that. Yeah. Oh my God, Sombra's ARG was so intense. Oh yeah. <laughs> was, yeah. She'd like you log into things and they would display messages and stuff and sometimes those messages like there was one that was a uh, a five character columnar cipher which is just this message this gobbledygook and then the internet was like nope we're already playing this game I'll tell you what that says in five minutes <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, but seriously though, like when I was watching somebody do like the walkthrough for how they figured out like Sombra's hidden messages, I was just like, this is actually like, what the hell? Like, do you have time for real life at all? <laughs> because I still haven't it was watched like, any of that. like the barcode <laughs> that was actually a QR code that was like, oh my god, okay, stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They care about their lore. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, like, it's it's totally awesome for me, but also just, like, I am concerned that these people are not, like, eating and sleeping properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's also people whose brains just kind of work like that, who, like, naturally see codes and hidden things inside of other things. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> they had tons of fun for months. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh my god, Sombra's reveal at BlizzCon... It was like the tail end of the ARG. She was like, yeah, yeah, I'll see you soon. And then everyone who was following the ARG was like, it's going to be a BlizzCon. It's going to be a BlizzCon. And she's going to hack a thing. <laughs> in that like Overwatch video, as soon as the first thing happened, you could see like some people in the audience being like, it's Sombra. It's fucking Sombra. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. <laughs> we knew this was coming. We knew it. <laughs> Let me say though, Quill, thank like just thank you for telling about all of this stuff because otherwise I probably wouldn't have been able to find it on my own. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but I I really really do love the Overwatch lore and stuff, but I and it's really pretty to watch and I appreciate that. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll I'll just sometimes go back and watch the shorts just because they're fun and. <laughs> oh yeah. And they're releasing comics too, which I is that would we consider that still like video game artwork? Is because it's not like it's not a video game, but it's about a video game. Yeah, it's still it it's it's part um, it's part of their brand, so it's like part of the video game. So like their comic books and their uh, ARGs and stuff like that, uh, any like visual stuff that they carry over that tends to be consistent with what they do in the video game. So you know, Tracer always looks like Tracer, Winston always looks like Winston, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm really sad about? Like, I understand, like, if the story evolved, like, you have to kind of move on. And I get that, and I appreciate that. But also, I really wish I could have run First Strike. Like, that kind of made me sad a little. Mm. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I haven't read that, actually. It, they, didn't, they didn't end up releasing it. Oh, they, yeah. It's one of the comics that they were going to release in, like, November of 2016, I think. And then they were like, actually, we went a different direction with the story, so we're not going to do this. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. we still don't know who like Liao is, and I'm really upset. <laughs> Ooh, although something I was reading recently in the Christmas comic, when there it pans to the scene of Soldier Seventy Six, um, looking at a picture, the uh, the character in the bottom and uh, the right side of that picture, you can see the the character on the left is clearly Soldier Seventy Six, and there's someone with like spiky anime hair, and. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people were like, oh, it's Tracer, but that does not make sense chronologically. So uh, some people dug into it, and the only picture we have of Yao is he has spiky anime hair. So, like, he's still he's still there. He's a thing. You know what's a he? It's confirmed. Uh, Yao? Yeah. Uh, it's a... Uh, hold on, let me... Also, just, just a comment on that comic. I just like how pretty much everyone, well, most everyone in the... Uh, well, just, like, like, all of the characters that are in that in that comic are like it's like yeah we're celebrating the holidays in some some shape or form meanwhile meanwhile like reaper's just sitting in the alleyway just brooding (laughs) (laughs) a humbug (laughs) he's true character at least yeah it's just very funny Mm -hmm. so the least he can do is be with talon but no he's off he's off on his own so i'll go ahead and put this image in the uh twitch chat Mm -hmm. boom um and that's uh that's the image, the only image so far with Liao in it, and it's the bottom left character. And, like, I mean, his pecs are big, but I'm pretty sure they're not breasts. Because otherwise... <laughs> the, uh, just click on the link. <laughs> Should be a link. Yeah, I don't know if I can actually put photos in... Um, oh, sorry, uh, Twitch chat, because viewers. Mm-hmm. I'd have to double-check my settings. It might be... Can I put images? Technical difficulties, everyone. (laughs) It's alright, we're new at this. We'll figure it out. (laughs) I refuse to figure it out, just for the record. 
Well, yeah, but you're not the one hosting it ah, <laughs> and running XSplit. <laughs> you don't have fun. to figure it out. <laughs> Shit, there, why don't you? <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't have anything on mine. Yeah, I probably. I I'll double check my settings later. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna slap it into the Skype chat <laughs> for, for you as well. Boom. I was able. I was able to open it on. I think it might be that you were already in the Skype or the podcast okay. chat. And they weren't. Oh yeah, I okay, was. So... I just had it open. Hmm. Sorry. So I wasn't sure. Like somebody was saying that wasn't Liao. Like somebody was saying that was like Gerard or something like that. Uh, everything I've heard was that that was Liao because this is this is a picture of. Um, the original Overwatch, the founding, and Mercy, I guess, is that Mercy? Yeah. No, that can't be Mercy. Ages is it aren't right. It's it's the hair. It is, but Mercy, uh, Mercy's forty. Farah's twelve in that picture, and Farah's now. Reinhardt's too young. Ray's I think Farah's like Faria's like thirty-seven or something. I think now. Yeah, Mercy's too young for that picture. Oh, the, yeah. the woman who's leaning on Tarbjorn? Yeah. yeah. Uh, although I think you might have to take the cr chronology with a grain of salt. They might give uh, fudge that a bit whenever they need to. <laughs> I was going to say, like, 50% <laughs> well, of was, Overwatch is like... I was going to say, <laughs> Mercy may be 40, but she looks like she's 18. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. Like Listen to her voice. <laughs> Who's the, but, who's the chick on the oh, far right? Uh, who is that? I don't know. I'm not sure. But I, um, I feel like I've done this. Symmet before. That would be Symmetra, would it? No. 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 no, no not wrong. No. She's is, she's too new. Yeah. yeah. And but, she wasn't uh, a part of Overwatch to begin with, so. Yes. And Michael there... Shoot, the story guy, said there are only two images with incorrect ages, and it was in those two images people should have been older. <laughs> <laughs> They were like, yeah. "Yeah, look, it's uh, it's Soldier Seventy Six, except he's clearly like thirty in this picture, and or like twenty five in this picture, and he should have been forty eight by canon, right? But it's <laughs> fine. <That's... laughs> we'll figure it out. It's, it's, it's all good. It's Overwatch, fine. Overwatch is just kind of playing fast and loose with time, <laughs> <laughs> which they kind of need to because it's just like if they need to ever retcon anything, it becomes that much harder if they say this is exactly what this is." Where yeah. what they've been doing for the most part is they're, they've kind of been giving rough sketches of everybody so that people can kind of fill in the details on, on their own. <laughs> but it makes it so hard to try and, like, come up with good theories because your theory can be, like, <laughs> joshed because, like, you had the timeline wrong. <laughs> That's true, but there is there is an official canon, and Michael Chu knows it. So if you if you really want to know, harass him openly on Twitter, uh, <laughs> violate the terms of service of Twitter, and just harass him until he tells you. <laughs> just like, possibly okay, commit a federal crime. <laughs> it's fine. Let me see what Michael Chu's Twitter is. <laughs> You will have to commit a felony in order to get him to do it. <laughs> That's, it's probably only a misdemeanor. It's still, I, I like, basically like stalking, it's though. It's at west of house, one word, all lowercase. It's normal words. Just in case, if you happen to want to know some, you know, some Overwatch stuff, you could just spam him with DMs. It's fine. Okay, okay, so I don't endorse this, but if you do find out, please tell us. <laughs> yes, the, yes, the the Games don't Are, are Beautiful show, podcast please. does not officially endorse stalking. <laughs> Correct. Unofficially, however. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Unofficially, let us know how it goes. <laughs> Guns don't kill people. People kill people. But I think the gun helps. Generally, oh. yes. <laughs> All right. Sure it's right here. <laughs> Um, oh yes, oh, where was it? Um, uh, Valeri brought up an interesting point earlier that um, uh, about uh, League and how they're, they've been uh, kind of gradually upgrading their aesthetic, and uh, WoW's kind of done this over the years as well. Like, any game that's kind of been in the pipe for a number of years is, is still being actively developed. Like, if you go back and look at uh, like wow screenshots from the early days and look at it now they they do actually look significantly different so even yeah. though it's kind of the same aesthetic it, it looks much more crisp and detailed now 
Yeah. Yeah. In uh, the biggest two, to my knowledge, is there was a significant art update in um, in Cataclysm and a significant art update in Warlords. I think mm-hmm. so. That was the like that was the last that I saw of what of what WoW looked like visually because I was like watching. I was just watching someone do like commentary board stuff. Mm-hmm. What was the I don't know, what was the game that I was watching like a playthrough of the other day that they like did a flashback to? I don't even remember. Was it Doom that like they like the original games were just like the shittiest graphics possible? And then, you know, like... hold on now, Doom for the time. Yeah, for the was time the first was like, a amazing. <laughs> Yeah, people were like, "I can move in additional <laughs> dimension." What's happening? <laughs> what is going on? That that's fair. Yeah, but yeah. like, I think one of the like, my favorite things about like <laughs> graphics and stuff is like the stylized games will last a lot longer than like the super realistic games because like just because the engines move on and like everything gets better. But also, like going back to the old games is a ton of fun sometimes. Like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, especially games that are that are either done in like a like a hand painted style or take on like an animated style is like if you play, for example, you know, um, like Super Meat Boy, you know, twenty years from now, it's still going to look good because it has this very uh, it simple aesthetic that it communicates what's going on very clearly, and it doesn't really have to you don't really have to upgrade the graphics so to speak yeah it looks yeah. good it, it, over time right exactly <laughs> with the like with the the doom thing actually with the newest doom i mean this is common knowledge at this point but there was there's actually in every every single le- level there's like a little hidden area where you just basically like you like you open up a door and beyond that door is just like a section from like one of the original levels so it's just like very realistic graphics and now we're in like a room of blocks with textures on them yeah uh, uh, I was playing uh, what was it Uh, Wolfenstein uh, the New Order uh, a while back and they like uh, you have a home base and there's like a little section up in the attic where if you go like lay down in the bed you'll like wake up you're basically having a dream and you're like in the original um, Wolfenstein with like the fist sized pixels and (laughs) (laughs) my gun is three pixels (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it actually uses the it's just, the. it's just a pistol. Right? Yeah, it actually uses the updated models from the current game uh, for the weapons, but it's yeah, so all it's, it's all the other stuff for 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 the enemies and the walls and stuff are all the old Wolfenstein. <laughs> so it's oh, really weird. Yeah, for for Doom, yeah, they didn't replace the like the the models themselves. It was literally the, they just put like a cell shading, like ba- basically. Like the rooms look like they do out of the old Doom, but when you when you walk in, like your your gun suddenly looks like a gun out of border, like just basically like the cell shading sort of comic book esque thing that they did with Borderlands, and then they do that with all the enemies as well. Yeah, yeah, that that kind of reminds me. Uh, I've been playing through Diablo season nine. Um... <laughs> Causing problems, Mort. <laughs> I do what I can. Yes, of course you do. Uh, but yeah, I, I've been playing through the Diablo Three Season Nine, um, and the was it the Darkening of Tristram event they did for uh, Diablo Twentieth Anniversary is basically you go through a portal and everything gets turned into like they they filter everything so it looks like the old style Diablo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Still haven't well, finished. That. And it's kind of really awesome because like. Games are kind of the only medium you can do that in. Like, if if a TV show went back to, like, I don't know. Okay, okay. So if the Wonder Woman movie, mm-hmm. like, went back to like the Wonder Woman TV show, like, film, uh, uh, not graphics, but film style, cinematography. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I think there would be a minor riot at this point. <laughs> It's it's just a silent film. <laughs> I will defeat you. Oh god, hold on though. If it's a silent film, if we're going back that far, we've also got to make it like weirdly sexist for a pro woman movie. Oh yeah. 
Um, <laughs> oh. They'll just probably give like just give the character more cleavage. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where the CGI comes in. <laughs> oh my god. You're you're thinking but, with but, mortals. No, worry, I'm this. <laughs> All right, uh, I got to pop out. Who made the Dead or Alive games? We'll get them on it. Yeah, I got to pop out real quick, guys. But I'll be back in like five ten minutes. So continue to talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, good. Now that he's gone, so. Okay. <laughs> how? But, but, yeah. Motion to. <laughs> Sorry. How do we kill him? <laughs> I don't know. You'll never know. So I didn't come prepared. Except for the fact that there's like an entire. Like audience watching, <laughs> they're all in on it. It's fine, guys. Do you have any ideas? I, I don't have any. I, there's, there's arsenic. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't arsenic's have not bad. Mind. Arsenic's not bad. Audience, what do you think? We're gonna have to wait for the stream delay, but what do you think? <laughs> Disclaimer: Does not advocate murder. <laughs> officially. 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 Do whatever you want, but we're not it's gonna. It's always officially. <laughs> if you do anything, this is not our fault. This was all you. Okay. Okay. Is it violent terms of service? Uh, it might. It might violate terms of service. That's a good point, Valer. <sighs> All right. Well, we're gonna have to put this off for another day then. I'm sorry, right. guys. I tried, but our mod made a good point. <laughs> Man. Anyway, Next time. But anyway, Quill. At some point, we should actually sit down and play Ori in the Blind Forest because I think you would like that. Yeah. I mean, like, how many times have we tried? We're very bad at, like, actually sitting down and playing this game. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, there's, like, a ton of games that we, like, we need to play this, we need to play this. We haven't had a chance, like, at all. Welcome to school. Everything seems like it'll be fine, and then it takes, like, ten years longer than you thought it would. <laughs> but, like, out of all of the ones that we said we should do, we should definitely do Ori in the Blind Forest, just because it's, like, super, super pretty. Yeah. You know what one game that I really love for graphics is is Bioshock because oh yeah I don't yeah. like horror things usually but I don't think that that game would have worked as well with like any other setting and it's not like it's not fully horror either but it's just it's the way I play it it is <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, kind of a horror game Saturn can attest to this <laughs> oh um, yeah that's right I. Uh, <laughs> I get like super invested in games. Like I'm the kind of person that like ends up hunching over my like the computer. Like oh god, oh god, in the dark. Like I go full aesthetic when I play these games, and uh, <laughs> yeah. But like if that had been on, like okay, so Bioshock Infinite. Don't get me wrong, really cool game. Really love the story, all of that. Mm -hmm. I think of the two, I think Bioshock was cooler. Yeah, like it's more. You feel more trapped in Bioshock 1. Like with Bioshock 2, that doesn't really qualify as a horror game just because you're like the you're the big daddy and like basically you're the biggest the like biggest baddest MF in the in the place. So Well, because like the whole like the staple of a horror a horror game is like you have to feel like powerless whereas in Bioshock 2 you're very much not and or or if not powerless, then like at least like way in over your head. Mm -hmm. And infinite was like it, it had the same game style. Like I don't think the I don't think the the controls changed any. Oh, but it was no good. longer at all the horror setting. It was no longer you are like less powerful than things trying to kill you. There was one Ooh. moment toward the end. That like was a little bit freaky, but yeah. For the yeah, sake monkey's of spoilers, not here to put the spoiler. Thing yeah, I, I was just about to say like, for the sake of spoilers, I'm not going to say anything right now. Hmm. Wait, wait, I like I, I just remembered like the one time that we got the, were we were actually able to play Bioshock together, and then there was that one part where both of us just freaked out. Like it was yeah. just literally just some guy standing. Like, I think it was, like, a problem he, with the game. He ran to the he... top of the staircase. It, it's funny, because Saturn's played this game before a couple times, and he was like, I've never had this problem before. But yeah, because like, I don't think I, I have anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, like like I said, I play with aesthetic, and I, I tend to, like, draw other people into that with me. So I was all freaking out about it, and then we got to the top of the staircase, and I jumped, and, <laughs> and Saturn jumped. It was great. <laughs> like, I... 
was that character like was that? It was just that, a slight there. Was he oh, was he man. moving though? Because I, I feel like he was just standing there. <laughs> like yeah, he didn't even there, start there was moving. just like a spicer standing at the top of the staircase, like for no reason outside of just like I don't know a jump scare. <laughs> Well, like, it wasn't just standing at the top of the stairs. It was, like, up the stairs and around the corner. Yeah, yeah, right. So that it would shock you. Yeah. Yeah. That's but actually... Like, I, have either of you guys ever played... Con- uh, what's I think it's Condemned Criminal Origin. I know there's several of them. I but, have that game, but I haven't played it yet. Um, well, you want to talk about art contributing to the horror of a game. Let me tell you a thing. What was it? Condemned Criminal what? Uh, Criminal Origins, which was released in 2005 on Xbox 360. So says Wikipedia, and thus, mic drop, that's true. No one can challenge it because Wikipedia is a god. Everything Uh, on the internet is absolutely factual. Abraham Lincoln. Um, (laughs) Mahatma Gandhi. But that game, I, I watched a couple friends play it, and it was, it's a scary game. But when I actually picked up the controller, they were like midway through the game. When I picked up the controller at the front end of it, uh, like the very, very first scene of the game, this is not a sp- If you think this is a spoiler, I'm a, you're wrong, Internet. Um, <laughs> but you're, you're like a cop of some kind, maybe a SWAT officer or something, and you're, you're told, like, go just through this building for a reason. I can't remember if, like, a criminal fled through it or what have you. But you have, you have one pistol... With, like, nine cartridges. Because, you know, for whatever reason, the police decided to not carry extra magazines that day. Because that's how, you know, that's how real police departments work. And um, you're going through this house, and it's, like, dark and creepy. And they've got noises happening every now and again. And I just got to this point where I'm, I'm about to enter this one room. And I can hear someone breathing faintly. And I'm so freaked out that I can't bring myself to enter the room. <laughs> and my friend's sitting there like, dude, it's just one guy. Like, you, you've got a gun. Just try not to waste that much ammunition. And I was like... <laughs> but, but, also... <laughs> and as soon as he, like, popped out from wherever he was hiding, I can't remember, I, like, panic fired, like, seven of my nine cartridges. <laughs> he died on cartridge three... <laughs> I just came up, ah! <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay, so if we're talking about like sounds and stuff, like and yeah, sounds absolutely count as part of the whole like the style and the it's not like a graphics and art animation, but it is kind of like a stylization choice a lot of times. The game what was it, Inside? That you were talking about Saturn? Like they played all of the sounds that you hear in the game through yeah. like a skull. <laughs> yeah, like they had it, like they, they like recorded, they like they made all the music and then they like recorded again, like by, like playing it through a human, like through a human skull and then just like, rec- like they put like just microphones all over like just the top of the skull and then just, I guess just piped all, just piped all the music through the bottom of it and then just recorded like the echo that it made. Yep, that's or something like, like that. Commitment to aesthetic. I'm sorry. That was we played that game in like what seven hours. Oh, yeah, we. And the, it was not straight through. We like we played it two separate times. I don't know, but that was that was. Oh God. <laughs> it was like two hours one night, and then like maybe three or four hours the next night. Because like, yeah. we didn't know welcome what's going. Chat. You're pretty. Sorry to interrupt, but Rumble Roar, welcome to chat. I miss you. Hey. Oh. I know that person. He's a sexy man. <laughs> Tell him somebody doesn't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but, yeah, no. no. Lists, like, inside was just absolutely terrible. Like, that, that's a really good example of, like, it's just a... Um, I'm, I'm blanking on the word. When the screen moves sideways, and, like, just sideways. Side scroll? Sideways? Yep, thank you. I don't... <laughs> okay, for some reason, I'm very bad with the word scroll. Like, I, I blame my mom for this a little bit. Like, when you say, like, roll down the window, my mom will say scroll down the window. And so I'm like, you can't say that word. So then occasionally I just forget the word scroll, like, at random point. This is, like, an actual thing that occurs on a regular basis. 
The elder, okay. oh, what is it? I got the word chair once, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's just a side-scroller where, like, you... It's, it's a lot based on, like, timing and reactions and stuff, and, like, figuring out, like, little puzzles, but that was, that was a terrifying game. That was, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever play Limbo or see gameplay of Limbo? Um, yeah, I've seen a gameplay of it. Yeah, because, like, that's, I mean, it's by the same developers as Inside, but it's, yeah. again, it's one of those things where it's almost worse because everything is just pretty much a shadow so even when you see something you don't quite know what it is yeah no that's i mean i don't know but like in inside so this is i would not count this as a spoiler it's just like a character design thing like all of the characters that you see just are kind of like oh it's back doll faces i guess we weren't planning like, like, to kill you. Like, Hi, Monkey. How's it going? don't have like, detailed Hello. facial expressions. What was that call? Um, on inside, like all of the characters, like they don't have like super detailed facial expressions. They just like they have like I don't know mannequin faces. It, Some of them are actually of... wearing masks, I think, as well, which is like, yeah. what the hell is going on here? Yeah, it just, it adds to the, like, absolutely terrifying thing that goes on. It's like, because it's like, they're not really people, kind of, but also, I don't know. It's it's a really kind of scary game. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, the two of us, like, spent, like, the next three hours after we beat the game just looking at, like, theories and what, like, what the game was. <laughs> what just <Yeah>. happened? <laughs> uh, no, I definitely got to the end of the game and just kind of, like... I don't know if it counts as rage quitting if you already beat the game, but... <laughs> well, it didn't really help that I was, like, no? teasing you. It's like, is it the yeah. end? Is it the end? Is it the end? <laughs> yes, yes, it is the motherfucking... <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which um, uh, kind of reminds me of... There's this... Um, Basically, there's this theory that's that's been developed over the years when it comes to um, art and design and kind of um, called the Uncanny Valley. Um, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, for those of you that don't know what it is, basically, um, if if you just Google, uh, let's see. Well, I, I will Google it myself. Uncanny Valley. Yes, but there's the the it could get you something else. So I want to double check the. Um, yeah, so um, if you if you Google Uncanny Valley, you should see a, like a graph that shows you it goes like up and then it has this like sharp uh, dip down and then it spikes back up again. So there's this weird thing that happens with human perception. If something's very much um, uh, not like a human being, people are able to kind of, you know, look at it and be like, oh, that's interesting, that's nice. Um, but there's like this certain point as you get in, um, close to what a human being looks like, suddenly there's this very uh, disturbed reaction in your mind where this is sort of like, this is almost a person, but not really. So this actually terrifies me. And Literally every Silent it, Hill enemy. <laughs> it's like right. as you add human characteristics to non-human objects, people are like, oh, it's cute, it's cute. But then it's like when you see, like if you've ever seen like a robot with synthetic skin or, um, you know, just like those those like off character designs where it's like it looks like a person, mm -hmm. but like the face is just off. Or even if it's not like a face, it's like their movements are kind of like weirdly jerky or something like that. Right. Like something in your brain goes, it's almost a human, but something's wrong with it. And this is like really unsettling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's and then it, it spikes back up when you get back to like high levels of it looks like a person again. Like if it's like almost perfectly realistic deleted my link well, you know what there's, i think there's like there's an enemy in silent hill that's like that where it's like i can't i think it's called like the like the lying the lying man or the lying figure something like that it's from the second game but it's literally just like it's shaped like just like an actual man but it's like the arms are like in sort of like a skin cocoon Mm -hmm. Like, you can see it, like, jerking around underneath the skin, but there's, like, 
no actual arms protruding from it, and then the like the head is just like a stump, <laughs> like it's just hmm. like a stump that's just growing out of the top that doesn't have any features, but it's just like a thing like that's supposed to be a head, but it isn't. It's a monster in a skin tube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. Like, it has legs, but... If you've ever seen, like, one of those dolls that, like, they tried really, really, really hard to make it look like a real-life person, mm-hmm. those are Uncanny Valley. Like, yeah, because there's just enough subtle things about it that your your brain interprets this as, like, disturbing. It's also why, uh, like... Uh, uh, zombie movies and television shows that's why zombies tend to be very horrifying because they're almost human but there's the, the obviously there's something wrong with them yeah that's always the like the huge argument in those like in just anything zombies but these were people they're not people anymore uh-huh. yeah exactly uh-huh. it's like not people anymore how could you say that and... yeah because very they... easily they are dead <laughs> <laughs> flesh is falling off of their face and they won't just ate Kevin fairly certain <laughs> do you care about Kevin then put a bullet in its motherfucking head <laughs> oh no honey honey Kevin's gone <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but it's also an interesting kind of topic from from kind of the development end of things as well because um, because we have this ability to do like almost full photorealistic photorealistic things now uh but it requires so much development time and so many resources to make things look that beautiful is developers are starting to realize you know what if we dial this back and use some sort of interesting distinctive art style that isn't quite so resource intensive we can do more with our game (laughs) yeah that's what they did with undertale but, right, exactly. There are two things about that. Mm-hmm. One, um, that's actually why a lot of indie games look really cool, is because they don't have the budget to make it photorealistic, so they do yeah. their own art. Style. Mm-hmm. And then two, the problem with that though is it requires having a unique and distinctive art style. Because if you screw that up, like if you screw up photorealistic, it's kind of like it, it sucks. But like that's just kind of how it is because it's not actually real people. Mm-hmm. But like if you screw up an art style, it it. It, it, it's at wor- at best unmemorable and at worst like a joke. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but I think that's um, a hazard of like anything in game development. You have to do something because I mean, how many eight bit platformers are out there? They're just yeah. like just get lost in the mix. Be like, there's some <laughs> like uh, Owl Boy is a recent one. Uh, that was like has this beautiful kind of pixel art style and it's very distinctive in how it looks but there's so many out there that are just just like I will never look at this again because this just looks like the hundred other games like this so yeah there there is always that hazard of kind of falling into the rut with everybody else (laughs) yeah yeah I just remember like we mentioned I can't remember who mentioned it earlier but it was like the it was basically it's like same game but with a different skin Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think I think you said it, cool. It was like the, like sort of like the Candy Crush thing, where it's like, well, this is just bejeweled, but it's like little candy pieces and mm-hmm. yeah, so on but and so candy forth. Candy is delicious. Well, yeah, <laughs> but <lot>. still, <laughs> it's juicy. But um, there was that was kind of like that happens a lot with a lot of indie games because there's a lot of jumping platformers. Mm-hmm. I guess like there was like I'm thinking primarily there was like a. There was like a like there was like a little cartoon that I saw on YouTube that it was like a bu- it was like the main character from Braid and the and like the kid from Limbo like sitting at a bar and then Mario comes up it's like oh it's so good to meet you you're so famous it's so nice to meet like a fellow jumping platformer and it's just like oh, they're like arguing like we're completely different from you it's like well like you have all of these similarities we're still so much better. You, you just don't get it. And then Super Meat Boy comes up and says, like, guys, my girlfriend's been captured, and I'm going to save her with jumping. And just goes up. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> and it then, was like the indie hipster thing that they were kind of joking off of. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, they, like, they hold, like, pretty much the same formula. It's like, but we're better in some way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Okay. You know what? I'm really, really I mean, they're good. Of games having, like, you can do whatever you want with is the games that have like real life acting cutscenes 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's the one that just came out, the, the Time Paradox one. Um. Oh, oh. I literally, I know what you're talking about, but I literally cannot remember the name of it. It, it I remember there being some controversy too, because it like originally came out exclusively on like the Windows 10 store and some other stuff. Oh, what is the name of that? I'm trying to remember. That sounds familiar. Quantum Break. Quantum Break. Oh yeah. Quantum yep. Break. Okay. Yep. <laughs> that one. It's like they they like I don't know. That was that was weird, and like. Cutscenes are always kind of going to be different than the rest of the game, but that was just kind of, like, unnecessarily weird. Mm. Also, because apparently the plot didn't lead anywhere. I don't know. I got bored. I quit. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was also one of those things where you could get different cutscenes depending on what you did in the game. So... Yeah. But... Yeah. <laughs> it was also weird because they were, weren't really cutscenes. They were more like... Here's a 30-minute television show you can watch, and then you can go back to your game. Be like, what? Yeah. Why? Why do you do this? Like, I expect that at the beginning of like a JRPG, not not this. Oh yeah, <laughs> like in the, the middle, like the, and then in the middle of the middle, and then also at the end, like 35 times. Right. Yes, but that's just part of the genre. So at least if I play a JRPG, I expect that to happen. That's yeah, just like two hours just to get through like a, a, just a text exchange. It's not like a cinematic. It's just like you're watching. What it's basically it's like this person's talking. This person's you're, talking. You're this reading person's a book. Talking. Yep. Yeah. yeah you're it's basically a, reading like a, a book. visual novel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I I actually had that like I experienced that recently. Because I was replaying Corpse Party, like the 3DS version, and mm -hmm. I got to the final chapter, and like, I was like, oh, I'll just finish this opening thing, and then I'll get started on homework. It took me two hours just to get through. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I, I had that, uh, what was it, Persona 4 Golden, uh, when I played that. It was just yeah. like, the first two hours of the game were like, people talking, and cinematics, and I didn't get any actual gameplay until like two hours into it. <laughs> it's just like... I understand you have to set everything up, guys, but goodness. <laughs> yeah, my well, roommate played that my freshman year, and he had that ex that exact response. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I think it was, like, EC. It was, like, you can't, when you're setting up a game, you have to realize, and this is, this is part of the whole, like, games are an interactive medium. People want to interact with them. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't, you need to tell your story through means that are not like words being spoken right like you could tell your story through like your setting you could tell your story through like the things like how you interact with the game but it needs to with video games specifically you need to have it not be based on text and words and dialogue because mm -hmm. unless you're doing it like there's dialogue being spoken while you're doing a thing mm -hmm. like that's not what people are here for <laughs> wasn't that the complaint that a lot of people had with like the 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 order game because it was just like mainly a just mainly a movie and you hardly ever actually interacted with things. There were a lot of problems with the order. Um, okay, th that was the the one with the werewolves, right? <laughs> it's like if it's Victorian so. England or something. <laughs> I think so. Like truthfully, I know bugger all about the game because it like other than the fact that the poster looked cool. Yeah, that that kind of had all sorts of problems and that. But, uh, where was I going with this? Eh, I forget. Oh well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, like, one of the things about, like, don't get me wrong, art styles are cool, and cutscenes usually have higher quality art art styles than, like, the rest of the game, but you also have to recognize, like, that that's not what people are here for. <laughs> like, they're yeah. definitely here. Like, what's the, the quick time events? Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> Well, I mean, Press X or not? <laughs> I mean, quick time events can be good, um, uh, depending on how they're used. If you use them well. <laughs> right, right. Like, um, what was it? Um, uh, I think it was Akuma's Wrath. I think was the name of it, where it was basically press X to to punch a planet-sized deity with your fist. Oh yeah, it was yeah, it was uh, Ashura's Wrath. As Asura's Wrath. Okay. Or yep. Asura's Wrath. Mm -hmm. Like what? But yeah, that was just an interactive anime for the most part. Yeah, which is which is fine if that's what you're trying to do with the game. That it that could a good be game, very, but... very effective. But uh, sometimes it's just like, 
Why why do I have quick time events? This this is not useful in context. <laughs> I think the only quick time events that I've actually seen like used well are I was playing uh, the escape the prison things from like addictinggames.com kind of stuff. Mm. And it was literally just like you have to do a quick time event in order to get out, but that's because like the entire game like playing through all of the different options takes maybe 20 minutes. Mm. So I'm not like sitting through 20 minutes of video to do a single quick time. It's literally like they're all right after each other kind of thing. Right, right. It's enough to keep me engaged in the in the game, but. <laughs> yeah, was like, like a. Th- oh, go ahead. Oh, oh, there is like a thing that I I heard. I I've only ever played like one Resident Evil game, but there was something that something that I saw. It was like they're playing the game. It's like oh, cutscene starting. I'll put my controller down for a minute and then. Next thing they know, they're dead because they were like, "Oh, I was supposed to press a button during that." Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, like if you Resident play like Evil... a really long cutscene and then have like a quick time event tossed in there. Yeah, Resident Evil Four was bad about that. <laughs> it was just like, "Here's like, a cutscene," and oh yeah, there's a quick time event. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I started playing that. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Like I'm still fairly early in the game, but yeah, I've heard that's just a thing that happens in that series. Yeah. Although. One kind of recent example where I thought they did it well was uh, Until Dawn. And yeah. Because even though it's like all of your interactions are basically quick time events, it's still it all of them kind of feel like they make sense. And there's some like like with some of them, there's some real tension in like if I screw this up, somebody will probably die. <laughs> yeah. More often than not, that will happen. Yeah. It's like I didn't give them a flashlight and now they're dead. (laughs) (laughs) Whoops. Oh god, yeah. Oh man. Okie dokie. So, uh, I think uh, we're probably good for this episode. So, uh, if you guys want to just... let folks know where they, they, they can find you on, on the internet. So we'll start with Quill and work our way over. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm on Tumblr at Anani Mouse Writer, like A N O N Y dash mouse dash writer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Sorry we got off topic. <laughs> that's fine. I mean, we're, we're just here talking about video games. If people want to watch us, hey, uh, enjoy, guys. <laughs> Let's do us ramble. Well, w- welcome to 90% of video game podcasts. <laughs> we have a topic, and then we wander off. <laughs> it's more fun that way. Keep things interesting. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we're having a good time, that, that's all I'm worried about. <laughs> okay. How about you, Saturn? Uh, for me, just same as Quill, you can find me on Tumblr at uh, Silent Watchman. It's uh, all one word, and it's singular, like singular Watchman, like with an, with an A. We had an issue with that last week. So. Mm. <laughs> specify. Yes, I'm looking at you, Mort. Mm-hmm. Did Mort die? Uh, Mort, I think you might be muted. I am because I didn't want to, you guys to be hearing my uh, my stretching noises. Okay, so uh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I'm S. Aaron Mortini. You can find me on uh, YouTube, Twitter, and uh, video games as S. Aaron Mortini. And uh, you can also find me in extreme pain on this podcast while I desperately try to stretch out my hips and back after screwing <laughs> me up. Uh, <laughs> with the fact that Monkey doesn't have Overwatch. <laughs> And, yeah, and dealing with that, God, that probably that had to have exacerbated it. Who's got, who has got morphine? Because that's what I need right now. <laughs> Where are the opioids? All right, don't yeah. have any more. <laughs> yes, and I, okay, you know what? So you know how we have the spoilers banner. I feel like we need to have one that's like disclaimer: we do not approve. Of it. <laughs> I feel like disclaimer: like disclaimer: we do not endorse murder. We do of not any endorse. Uh, currently endorse endorse the host talking. <laughs> yeah, you've got to you got to make one that says. I think we just uh, need that a banner for Mort. <laughs> You're like Mort. It's not family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> not officially endorsed. That's <laughs> not not officially endorsed. We'll get a we'll get a lot of use out of that. <laughs> Somebody remind me to make one later. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Not a language warning. Just that. Yeah. Um, Our language warnings. 
Uh, and uh, something I forgot to do last time is um, uh, a, a thank you to our, our lovely moderator, uh, Valeri, who's been helping us out and uh, did, did this nice little overlay for us and did the, um, uh, the the logo for the new logo. So and the old logo too. So good job for her. Yay! Woo. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate. Uh, and you can find me uh, uh, pretty much everywhere: uh, YouTube, Facebook. Um, uh, Twitter uh, here on Twitch as uh, Monkey Boom Two E's No Y. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for coming, and hope you enjoyed. Bye. Bye. <laughs> did, did we kill the sound this time? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>